feature just this morning here. Um, I like to, it's someone I like to um, actually listen to. Um, I want to hear his insights. I know generally sometimes they ask for notes from the technical people, but they also have their own perspectives as policy makers. And at this time, I want to invite the Honorable Minister to address us. Thank you, Winston, and good morning. good morning. I think you oversold me a little bit and, and oversold what, I'm, what I've been asked to do and what I'm planning to do. I want to say that I, my cell phone and all my other technology was liberated over the weekend by some young um, entrepreneurs. And so I don't know how long, what time it is, because I don't wear a watch. And my cell phone has been, um, not only did they liberate my cell phone, but they've taken to sending me taunting texts and emails from the liberated cell phone. Um, so Lime and Digicel, please, any bills that have been incurred over the weekend, um, I hope you forgive them. But I don't know how long I'll be speaking for, so I'll try to speak for a short time, because you know I have difficulty doing that. So I'm going to try to be as brief as possible. Um, and thank um, Apollo, Winston, um, Gerald Thompson is absent, and of course, Roxanne John for her very important role here. I noticed that Apollo um, made apologies to Roxanne for, for um, the, the, the disagreements. I'll save my apologies, because CARSIP isn't finished yet, and I'm sure we'll have. <laughs> We'll have some more disagreements in the future. Um, I'd also like to thank um, Digicel, Lime, Columbus Communications, the CTU, Ectel, um, Packet Clearing House, and the World Bank, through which the CARSIP project is, is being funded. And to say that this is a very important milestone in the development of ICT and technology in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have, we have a, a national development plan, which is, which is supposed to be our roadmap for development through 2025. And under some very broad headings, we say in, in the area of, in, in, of ICT, that we must increase access and use of information and communication technology in all aspects of life, that we must build competitiveness through the use of ICT, and that we should develop a robust, competitive, and sustainable niche ICT sector driven by small and medium enterprises. And under each of those heads, we have a number of interventions. But what it means um, from, from the perspective of the government is development and jobs. And that is what we want out of our ICT sector. We believe that technology, not only can it increase the efficiency of the government in doing existing tasks, but it is a trampoline, it is a springboard, it is a catapult that can get us further up the developmental ladder at a faster rate than we would have otherwise had to do. So when we look at the developmental experiences of other countries and the way that countries that have developed before us have gone through the path of development, we add ICT as an accelerant and say that we can skip some steps on the ladder if we properly use and utilize technology in our developmental path. So it's very important to the government that ICT be geared towards development. And it is also very important, and, and part of that development, is that it generate jobs. It has to generate jobs in technology itself, whether that be app creation or, or dealing with hardware or software. 
it has to generate jobs in technology enabled sectors. So it could be a regular job, it could be a newspaper, but it could be a newspaper that has been enhanced in some way through the use of technology. Um, it has to generate jobs in content creation. It has to generate jobs in education. It has to generate jobs in service. And I know that very soon in the service sector, um, we'll be announcing formally the creation of um, 50 ICT jobs in, in the call center sector, but there are many other sectors in technology. And it's very important that when the government talks about technology in a small island with limited resources, we talk about things that can advance the developmental objectives of the country or things that can bring jobs to people. Because in technology, it's very easy to get lost chasing your own tail because there's always a new thing on the horizon. There's always a new thing that some gadget head will come to you and say, listen, we really need this. Forget what I told you we needed last week. We need this, and it costs $20 million. But if we get this, there'll be a brighter tomorrow. And then three months into you proceeding on that project, a new piece of technology comes out, and they say, forget what I told you about that last thing. What we need is this, and this will take us there. And it's very easy if you read the technology news because things happen at such a rate that you can be in this endless cycle of starting and not completing projects. Um, and the, the government, because we have limited resources, not only financial resources, but human resources, has to try to keep our eye on the prize. And what we're talking about is things that we believe can bring development, and or jobs uh, to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And that is where we get to something like an IXP, which is not the sexiest thing that you will ever hear Winston or Roxanne or Apollo or I come to talk about um, at a press conference, because Roxanne showed you what it is. It's, it's, it's a rack. It's, at least that's what it looks like. She said that. You might have one in your house, but I don't know what sort of house you live in. But um, that's about $100,000 worth of US dollars worth of equipment, and certainly not in my house. Um, but it's important because it keeps local traffic within local infrastructure. And that is important for so many reasons. Um, if I were, as a, as a government minister, to send an email communication to the prime minister from my house in Rathamill to the prime minister's residence in New Montrose, that message does not travel from Rathamill to New Montrose. It travels very often to Miami and maybe other points in between before it finds its way back down to Rathamill. And there are obviously efficiency issues there, because it's obviously a shorter distance from Rathamill to Montrose. But there are also security issues there, um, because that communication, conceivably and, and in reality, um, can be perused by people at the various points through which this, this communication travels. And for you, the consumer, or you, the content provider, or you, the network services provider, it's inefficient and expensive for you as well to have to route communications that should be going down the street around the world and back. And it creates efficiency issues, it creates speed issues, there are problems with latency in, in, in that regard. Um, there are problems with bandwidth, how much you can fit in this pipe that Apollo was talking about that goes overseas and comes back, when our own communication is, is relatively light, given our small size. But it becomes subject to all of the vagaries of the internet beyond our shores. And it has significant impact on our ability 
to develop some of the things I talked about in the National Development Plan, such as increasing access, such as improving our competitiveness, and such as building a homegrown ICT industry, however niche that industry may be, within our own borders. Because if all of our content has to ship itself overseas and come back, um, if you're trying to attract foreign businesses, they will ask a question about why don't you have an IXP? Because why should I ship my data overseas to bring it back here? If I could just stay at closer to that point, it's more efficient. And if you're trying to attract Google or Akamai or somebody like that to produce local Vincentian-centered content, one of the things that they first want to know about is do you have an IXP? Do you have a local address, a local point where the providers can exchange data? And it is one of the necessary infrastructural prerequisites to creating the sort of internet-enabled society that we envisage in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So it, it's critical, and, and we're grateful to CARSIP, which is the Caribbean Regional Communication Infrastructure Program, or project program, um, for assisting in the procurement of this equipment. And this is one component of CARSIP's many-sided plan to improve some of those boring things, um, but important things in in our communication infrastructure. Uh, some of the things that would be difficult for a government in a small island context like ours to be able to fund for ourselves. Not only the infrastructural work that they're doing, but also the business incubation and, and the training uh, that they want to provide. We are in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, <coughs> excuse me, at a very important point. The, Roxanne mentioned that there are seven other CARICOM countries now, we are the eighth, um, to have their own IXP. She mentioned some others, but they're not CARICOM countries, like Curacao and DVI and, and those. Um, so that puts us in the middle of the pack. We and if you look at the various indices about where St. Vincent and the Grenadines is in terms of penetration of I, um, ICT, um, accessibility and affordability of ICT, you'll see that regionally we are better than average. But we have to be better than better than average. And we can be because one of the advantages of small size is supposed to be nimbleness and things should be more affordable because um, our IXP is smaller than many other IXPs because of our small size and we have to leverage our small size to our advantage and we have to be quick to adopt and act upon uh, meaningful and transformative technology solutions so that we move from average or slightly above average to cutting edge. Because if we can tell a business that we're trying to attract, a foreign direct investor that we're trying to attract, look, we are the best country in the Caribbean in terms of our rate of adoption, in terms of our ICT infrastructure, in terms of the bandwidth available to you in terms of the education of the population, of your potential workforce, um, in terms of the cost of internet. I'm looking at Lyme and Digicel on that one. Um, we, if we can tell an investor that, we will attract that investment. But if we tell them that we're not, there are a lot of other countries doing worse than us, um, we suddenly become a lot less attractive. So these are things that we can do to make ourselves a potential leader in ICT in this region. And the benefits that will flow, we believe, 
I believe, Apollo believes, Gerald Thompson believes, Roxanne Winston, can be enormous. Um, we are at the point of a demographic shift in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have more and more young people in this country, and the demographics tell us that we're, there's going to be a ballooning number of teens and young adults in this country. And the way in which they access information, the way in which they use information, the way in which they interact with information is very different than when I was growing up and certainly when people older than I were growing up. Um, there, we have representatives here from newspapers. We have representatives here from the traditional media. And those young people I'm talking about aren't reading your newspapers. And they're not watching your news programs. They may watch a clip of it that has been condensed and resourced and placed on YouTube for you to catch your news in 15 seconds. Um, or they may read the one article in your newspaper that went viral, or maybe the one headline of the one article in your newspaper that went viral. And they will want to interact with that news story. They will want to comment on it. They will want to share it. They will want to contort it in some way, depending on if it's a sound file or a music file or a video file. They have a different perspective on information. And they're going to want to interact with their government in a different way. They're going to expect to have their government on their cell phone. They're going to expect that if they want statistical data about the government, that they can find it with a useful app, that they don't have to line up at somebody's office to be sent to somebody else's office, to go to a third office, to get a half answer and a comeback next week. Because that, to them, is a non-functioning state. Because everything else is instantaneous. And not only do they want the information instantaneously, they want to be able to communicate with the state instantaneously. I get now, as, as, a, as an elected representative or as a government minister, I get Facebook messages or emails or WhatsApps from constituents who are angry if I don't respond to them within 15 minutes. You know? I get a message, and then I get another message saying, what? I see the two blue tick. I know you see the message. Why haven't you responded to me? <laughs> and, and that is the nature of the changing expectations of the citizenry. And the government has to adapt to that, not, not to promise five-minute responses, but, but to change the way in which we operate now, which is essentially, why are you bothering me? <laughs> I will tell you when I need you. And we have to change that mode of interaction. And to do all of those things, and I could go on and on, we have to provide infrastructure to people. We have to provide education to people. We have to provide the right software and environment to people. And we have to do boring things like this, which is have a rack down at a point where a cable is coming ashore to make local communication stay local and to make communication travel in a quick manner and to make governments feel safe that their information is secure and to make that large file, that movie that you're sending, or that recording that you're sending, if you're a, a singer, that you, you, you've made your next carnival hit and you're sending it to the producer for mastering, that has to be able to go down the road and not around the world. Or that article that you've written, or that photograph that you've taken, or that local content that you've created, that Vinci-specific content that will make Vinci culture or Vinci creativity something means something online. It has to be able to travel locally. And when those things, when the basic infrastructure is in place, that is when the development happens. There were 
to this day, but certainly 50 years ago when you talked about development, one of the first things you talked about was roads. We need a road from the, where you grow the banana to the port. You need a road from where the people live to the school. Now you need an IXP. That's your road. Um, in the, you still need roads. I'm not saying that the government should be fixing the roads. Um, but today and going forward, the road you need is an IXP. This is, your data has to travel in the same way that you expect to travel, which is the shortest distance between the two points in a smooth and efficient manner. And that is what we're talking about here today. It is a baseline requirement for all of the lofty things that policymakers like to stand up here and talk about from time to time. I could go on and on about how we need to be making our own apps, how we need to be making our own content, how all of us have cell phones. Some of us have two, some of us have three. Um, and all of us, the government has provided laptops to every student. Um, Apollo and the NTRC, um, Paul is doing incredible work in providing free Wi-Fi across the country. You have it now at your hard courts. You have it in the waiting rooms of most um, government buildings. You're having it at playing fields. You're having it at people's homes. If their home is central enough to a village, getting in, um, they have an antenna to make sure that the village can get internet. And more and more of those things will be rolled out um, this year um, to make other things, to place them in the hands of people. So we're giving everybody a computer. We're giving people Wi-Fi. There's Wi-Fi in schools. Um, the rates are coming down uh, from the providers, and they're always in their own competition trying to one-up each other on the type of um, services that they provide. So you're placing in people's hands the tools. But what we do right now is we take those tools and we access foreign-made content. Um, we're not making anything of our own uh, in significant numbers. We go online, we go to a foreign-made website, a foreign-made social media platform, a foreign-made uh, media distribution point, and we look at or read about foreign-made content. And you can while away many hours doing that, but it's not productive from the perspective of the government. Um, we want those, th that time to be spent either producing local content or having you, the consumer of information, consuming local content, because that will generate income and jobs and development in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I could talk a lot about that, but the important thing is to say that today we are making a very important step in our own technological development and that we're building a very important part of that road to keep our information local and that it will benefit not only you, the consumer, in your surfing or consuming experience, but it has uh, wonderful potential benefits for development uh, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Apollo said the house is, is still empty, and it's true. Um, or the road, there's no traffic on the road um, that I'm talking about. But we believe that this is an important first step. You need the house or you need the road um, before you can get the development, the traffic um, that we, we hope for. And now you will hear in the coming months about all of the initiatives through CARSIP, through the NTRC, through ECTEL, through our own ministry, through the private providers to generate excitement and interest to, to help um, not only in young people, but in you, the consumer, to help shift our internet consumption models to things that can benefit our own growth and our own development and our own sense of Caribbeanness um, going forward. So I want to thank all of the people involved. Um, I know that the XP has been running quietly in the background for a few months. Um, it hasn't blown up. Nothing bad has happened. And we looking, we're looking forward to 
even greater developments, not only coming out of this IXP initiative, but new developments that can take advantage of the fact that we can now say we are one of the few countries in the Caribbean to have an IXP. And that is important, not only developmentally, but as a signal of our intentions uh, to make St. Vincent and the Grenadines one of the leading um, employers of ICT to transform our nation and our economy. Thank you very much. Thanks, Minister. I just want at this stage to um, express thanks to a number of persons. I want to thank again the Honorable Minister for his presentation, Sir Paula Knights as well for his presentation, Roxanne for his, for her presentation, sorry, um, the operators who are represented here, the participants in, in the workshop for being here, the media as well, and for Mike, our facilitator, he's out of um, South Africa, but he is based in Brazil, I think, now. And I want, in, in wrapping up this part of the session, to invite our participants to, you know, try as much as possible to extract, you know, whatever questions, you know, whatever queries you may have in terms, based on his different presentations, you ask them so that we can, you know, address the next part of the IXP, how we get um, content to the IXP, how we administer it to ensure that it is um, sustainable and reliable as we go forward. So once again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.